we're in the middle of a big recruiting week for your Ohio State Buckeyes. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. One thing we know about the recruiting trail and the pursuit of these elite talent and football players is that you always have to be going after them. One day, two days, three days off could be the end of you trying to get a player you targeted for the past 365 days. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Wednesday hump day edition of Locked On Buckeye as part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast, and I'd like to thank you. For making Locked One Buckeyes your first listen every day. During today's show, we're going to be joined by Mr. Brian Smith. Brian is Locked One's recruiting analyst. We're going to touch on the big recruiting week that Ohio State has, why so many schools around the country are choosing this time period to host unofficial visitors. And we're going to touch on three talented guys that will be in Columbus. One of them, Tarvis Alford, has set a commitment date of March. 30th. And as you welcome in Brian Smith, I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. Brian, I saw your note in the group chat on Twitter or X, whatever we call it, talking about, hey, this is a big recruiting week for not just Ohio State, but across the landscape of college football. This is a big week for recruiting and getting kids on campus during practice. Why do you think everybody's choosing this week to be a big recruiting week for them getting kids on campus? A lot of the schools are going to have open availability to have kids come Kids are just trying to find a way to go to practices and stuff before they go on their spring break. Some are on. Like, every school's different. Some schools, maybe they are, so that's part of it. And there's some scrimmages, especially this upcoming weekend. The kids want to see the scrimmages. That's the big thing for Saturday. So a bunch of scrimmages across the country that nobody's going to see except for recruits and parents, basically, because everybody's worried that, you know, they're giving away secrets to the Soviets. But uh, that's that's what's going on. Yeah, it's one of those things that I, if I was a kid, high school, no matter if I'm going to be, a, if I'm a junior or if I'm a freshman, if I get a way to get to a school to watch a camp, to watch practice that is recruiting me, that's a huge bonus. It's also a huge bonus when Ohio State's getting three really, really good athletes and recruits on campus at the same time. Kalik Lockett, uh, Kanoa Winston, and then Tarvis Alfred will be the three athletes you touch on today. So let's start with Lockett, another wide receiver. We know how Brian Hartline recruits this position. He's a Texas kid, 6'2", 190, excuse me, 175. When I watch him play, his deep ball ability, being a deep ball threat every single time he's out there, is huge. It jumps off the screen, but he's also polished. And he's going to be a guy that you got to put some weight on him, but he does, be, he does have the ability to bring the ball skills and to win one-on-one to the next to the next level, I think he'll do that pretty quickly. Yeah, Kalik's one of those guys that can take the top off of defense. He plays in the greater Dallas area. Uh, if I remember correctly, he's a Texas kid. I've seen him play. He can just run by guys, and he's got a little size to him in terms of height. He's over six foot tall. He needs to add a little weight before he gets through college, but if you don't get your hands on him at the line of scrimmage, it's pretty hard to do something with him. And his offer list is like – LSU and Texas and Southern Cal, Ohio State. It's as elite as it gets for teams that can throw the ball. That also kind of puts things in perspective. But I've seen the eye test. I I can assure you he can go by, guys. Uh, and it didn't take long when I was preparing for this show, watching clips of him play, and I'm like, oh, he's different. And I don't like to use that phrase or that term about a lot of guys. And there's a lot of really good receivers around the country. So don't get me wrong. I realize this is a position that is littered with talent. But he's different than a lot of guys that I've seen. And even when I saw some of his track numbers in the 100-meter dash, and I was like, that track time doesn't really sometimes stack up to what I see on the film because it seems like he runs faster on the film, uh, faster on the field, which is great because let's say he puts on a little bit of weight and he he keeps that same – 
playing style that he currently has. Hardline will love him. Ryan Day will love him. And if Chip Kelly's still here, he will too. Yeah, that's a that's a kind of piece where you can change your offense because teams have to respect what he can do down the field on every play. And that opens up your running game, your tight ends, and all the short stuff you want to do. So, yeah, he's a chess piece. Now, it doesn't hurt to have Jeremiah on the field or somebody right. like that too. But, right. you know, I don't know where the kid's going to go. His offer list is ridiculous. But Ohio State's one of them, and he's a five-star player in my eyes in terms of just raw talent. So, Hartline knows how to recruit receivers. If he goes to the Buckeyes, he'll do pretty well. And when it comes to these kids in Texas, and you've been doing this for a long time, do you see them leaning one way, either Midwest, down South? What region of the country do you really think that they might lean to? Texas is wide open. That's the state I don't mess with predictions hardly at all. Those kids don't have a lot of loyalty to Texas anymore, although I think Texas going into the SEC is bad for everybody else because that will make it really hard to get kids out of there when they want a guy. But outside of that, those kids go everywhere. So SC, it could be Florida. I mean, the top quarterback in Texas last year went to University of Florida after a bad season. So there's no telling where those guys will go. But Ohio State's one of the few schools that consistently – it's the higher end guys to leave the state that's not named Alabama or Georgia. Those are the, probably the three programs, not really shocking. They get the most out of Texas. So, you know, in LSU, I mean, it's next door. That's kind of different, but they recruit a lot of the East Texas and Houston kids real well. But yeah, Ohio state will get two or three kids from the state of Texas anytime they want pretty much getting the locket though. That's a difference maker. That's a little harder because he, he has an offer from pretty much any school he wants. You know, that, the thing you just touched on about getting Lockett being harder and also being very, very important, that's one that I think Hartline's experience, not just in the recruiting, Brian, but him being a developer of talent at the receiver position, I think it's going to come to play big and huge here in this recruitment process for this young man, for this receiver, because it's not just, hey, we get you to campus and we do what's needed to get you there. Hartline's putting guys in the NFL – First round picks every single year at receiver. This year is going to you're going to have one in Harrison Jr. You're going to have one next year in Abuka. Year after that, if Tater Ennis comes out, they'll, if they progress like we think they will, they'll be first round uh, first round picks, maybe top ten picks. So that's as much of a, a recruiting tool for Heartline, not just him being the recruiter to get you on campus, but man, once you get here, we develop you and we'll make you a lot of money then at the next level. That's one of the reasons they keep getting kids and getting them early. You know, I, I saw Chris Henry Jr. recently at a tournament, and he looks college ready. You know, he's just transferred out to modern day in California, but he's six four and a half, six five, one ninety eight, and he's got no waist. You know, he's all he's all shoulders, legs, and arms. But they just have a guy in every class. It's an elite receiver because they expect Hartline to be able to develop. That's you know, those kids want to get coached. They want the best opportunity to get paid. I can't blame them. No, wrong with that. I can't. I don't blame him at all. And I'll be looking forward to the next athlete we're going to touch on in Jarvis Alford. He has set his commitment date. And I think Ohio State has a chance to get a commitment from him. We'll dive into Alford next as the show rolls on. This episode is brought to you by Better Together. Bracket already busted. Tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best? Or losing on the last leg of your pickup entry? Introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social daily fantasy sports movement. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember, the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. This episode is also brought to you by eBay Motors Passion, Drive, and Patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up for peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly where you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time 
or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fits, only available to U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV? Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. Now, when we hear Alfred on this show, Brian, some people might be a little disgruntled or upset because Tony Alfred just left and went to Michigan. And I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I have my own thoughts about this. But it was very weird when I saw a picture of him in Michigan gear there at practice. But he made a decision for his family. We talked about it last week when Brian was on the show. Tony Alfred's gone. Tarvis Alfred might be coming. We have touched on him before, Brian. You and I touched on him earlier this year about how good he is And the fact that he has made a commitment date set for March 30th, about a week and a half from now, is huge. And those recruiting visits that Ohio State made earlier this earlier this year could be pivotal to this young man getting saying he's going to play football at Ohio State. Yeah, if they can get somebody like that early out of the state of Florida, that's a feather in their cap. They've done it pretty much every year for quite a while, getting Mm -hmm. some get from Florida. But I think Tarbos is one of those. Modern linebackers, if you will, could play on the overhang position, could play will, whatever you wanted him to do, and it's because he can run. He's a typical Florida kid. That's the first thing that pops out when you watch him live or watch him on tape. I've been blessed to see both. There's no doubt about it. He has the physical traits to go wherever he wants and be a, a player that comes in and competes. Ohio State, they, they want to go faster with the new defensive scheme. They're a little more aggressive, et cetera. This kid kind of fits that, too. Uh, old school Ohio State or Florida State from the 90s, early 2000s, that kind of defense, downhill and really aggressive, that's what he fits. You know, that's that's one thing I think Ohio State really needs to get back to more of that old school style of linebacker. Not saying you you don't need new skill, new, new school type of skills, but I think there's a miss and a disconnect between some of the linebackers Ohio State currently has and what they used to have in Columbus. Now, I recently saw and looked at Ohio State's battling with Miami, Florida State, those Florida schools to get a Florida kid to come to Columbus. It's really, really, really hard. From things you've heard, maybe you've talked to him, where do you think Ohio State stands right now, right here in this commitment? Everywhere. Like, ask me in another hour would be a different answer. He's yeah. a Florida kid, man. Yeah. I don't put a lot of stock in what he says right now, and I probably won't put much stock in what he says on March 30th. That's just the state of Florida. If you're going to recruit this state, they're never recruited even after they're signed. I mean, that's just – they're not very committal in this state. I mean, that's just the way it is. He's a pretty laid-back guy for the state of Florida, but by and large, the kids down here, man, they're very fickle. Every little phone call, every little message can change where they go. Ohio State's got to figure out the code, though. I mean, they've probably won more battles in the state of Florida for big-time guys in the last two, three years than anybody other than maybe Georgia. So, again, part of that's heartline, but Alford was part of the recruiting process down there. They did a good job, and Ryan Day and the whole staff do a good job. So I've heard Ohio State from people, and I've heard other people say Miami. I'm not making any prediction. Um, Some of my buddies are a little closer to it, but I'm like, I've been around Alford enough to know that he could go a lot of directions. You know, Brian, it's interesting you talk about that date, March 30th, and you maybe not even believing him when he makes his announcement about where he's going to play football there on that date because we talked about it, you've talked about it, talked about it for a long time here when, when we do recruiting updates. A verbal commitment is great. It's not the end. you got to get enrolled because that's when I fully believe you are there. Talk about Cam Ward. For a part of the time, this recent transfer portal cycle, I thought Cam Ward was going to Ohio State. I thought for a second at the beginning, I was like, no, 
Then I heard, thought, yes, and I thought for sure it was a done deal. Next thing I know, he announces he's going to the NFL draft. Then all of a sudden, Miami's like, no, we didn't, well, no, no, no. We're not satisfied with that decision. They're going after him. They're going after him. They're going after him. And they pursued him so hard and said the right things to pull him from the millions of the NFL to play one more year in college down there in Miami. So Alfred, being a Florida kid, Miami, not going to go away in, at any time soon. They are going to do one thing. If they are not the guy, the team that gets picked on March 30th, they're going to pursue harder. If they are the team that gets picked on March 30th, they're going to pursue harder as well because you got to get enrolled. Until you're enrolled, this thing ain't done. That's just the way recruiting is in general, especially in the state of Florida, because so many teams recruit in Florida. There's just more athletes there to pull from. And Cristobal, he takes a lot of slack because Ohio State gets kids down there, especially South Florida kids. This kid's from the, the coast, but it's still important. And I think in a lot of ways, Ohio State getting a kid from Florida, Miami, would rather kid go to Florida State, as goofy as that sounds. Uh, I mean, it's competitive anyway because they get tired of hearing about Ohio State. And they don't like kids leaving that they really want. And they targeted Tarbos pretty darn early. That's a really good sign if you're, you know, Ohio State's after you, Miami, et cetera. On a side note there, it's legit. His his offers are there and his rankings are there for a reason, and he's an all-around linebacker. But just in general, if you get three or four kids and you're an out-of-state school to commit to your institution, Ohio State or otherwise, and you're out-of-state, you're going to lose one of them. That's just pretty much how it is. There is no loyalty in the state of Florida. The further south you go, the less loyalty there will be. Those kids, they're not that loyal. So what's fresh in the next 10 minutes is more important. A lot of times. It's just true. Uh, not always the best people around making decisions for them in the state of Florida. And a lot of the kids are chasing the wrong dreams. You aren't the first person to say that kids, the further south you go, aren't loyal. Is that the first time you said that here on this show? Why do you think that's the case? Culture of South Florida. Me first. A lot of me first, and then repeat that a hundred times. So I, that's it. Right, they see it every day in adults. So why wouldn't the kids act that way? Ah, oh, good point. Good point. Did think about that one. Yeah, you you do what your family members do, the people in your community do, and it's doesn't matter background, race, education, etc. It is a dog eat dog world in South Florida. You know, Brian, we got two athletes down. These are two really talented kids. This other one, this safety from DC. He's really good, too. We're going to touch on, I believe it's Kainoa Winston next on Locked on Buckeyes. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Auburn Tigers can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC. As they knocked off the Florida Gators in the SEC Tournament Championship, they're set to make a run in the NC2A tournament. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. And guys, check this out. Billiards Plus carries grills that have up to 30-year warranties. Everything you need for in-home and backyard entertainment is at Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Alhassen, Canada, Billiards, and more. And the grills? Whether you like charcoal or gas or wood-fired, Billiards Plus has a perfect setup for all grillers. They are family-owned and operated, and when you talk to the staff at Billiards Plus, you know. You're talking to an expert who won't steer you wrong. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Kenny? Sarah, and the whole staff will always go above and beyond to give you the best customer service in the industry. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Dublin Central Drive in Dublin. Kainua Winston, Kanoa Winston, I don't know how to say his first name, but I do know this. When I watch him play football, this kid pops off the screen. The first play I saw, Brian, 
And he's he's a safety. He's way, way, way back. He goes around. The, he came in. He closed in. And he laid down the lumber. Boom. Knocked old boy down. And that's one thing I see when Wentz is on the field. He's rangy. He closes fast. And you feel him when he gets there. Yeah, there's a lot of players in the D.C. area, man. Ohio State's had a lot of success recruiting D.C. in the last 30 years. Going back to the early 90s, they've, they've always gotten a kid here or there on their roster. And this is no different. This, there's a reason. He's at Gonzaga. It's one of the tradition-rich programs in that city. I think this is the kind of kid they need to get to continue to run Knowles' defense. He can play multiple roles in the back end of the defense. He can drop down and hit somebody. He can cover, too. He's got good timing. We're getting to the football. Not surprised. Uh, Ohio State, Penn State, uh, the Carolina schools, Notre Dame, their, their handful of schools are always in that area. Ohio State might recruit it the best out of anybody. So him coming this weekend is interesting. They're, they're trying to kind of get to the point where they're done with their defensive, you know, like the start they had at corner, you know, they can be really selective. This is an example of that. They can be pretty close to done. I don't know how many they're trying to take, but, I mean, this could be the it if they got him to commit. You know, that number about potentially trying to gauge how many they're trying to get, it's one that I think they're expecting, hey, you're going to get here. Some of y'all will make it. Some of y'all might be slower developers than others, which isn't a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not saying you need to be a fast developer. But sometimes those guys that are fast developers, they get on the field quicker. And if you're a slower developer, you got to wait your turn. But then there's a school maybe a couple states away or a couple states south where you're saying, well, I can get on the field now there even though I'm developing slower. And so I do think Ohio State realizes if we stockpile this thing with elite talent, with as much talent as we need at this position, we're going to keep some guys, develop some a little bit faster. But then those that are maybe slower developers, they're going to hit the portal. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, getting guys in to compete, developing guys, and those that develop quickly, they stay. Those that might be developing a little bit slower, they leave. Yeah, it's just the way it is. You over-recruit your positions every year at every school now. The the days, like what Dabo wants to build, you're not winning a national title that way anymore. I got news for it. Uh, they'll be close, but they're not going to get over the top. He's he's going to either have to eat it and take transfers or it's not going to work. Can't lose them and not gain them. Ohio State's done that a little bit, but again, it's still about taking as many elite high school kids as you can to get yourself in a position to make a key play here or there the end of the game or it's just the, the athlete it's not the play caller it's not the scheme that's what we're talking about here with Winston and yeah, again with the corners that they're recruiting the safeties ought to have a pretty good time having some overthrows and some iffy opportunities for the other team kind of give them some freebies I have a feeling Winston will do quite well with that I think so too when you watch Winston play what are some weaknesses that he has well I mean he's not the biggest guy he's 5'10 you know but he's a kid that's fearless and he's played the D.C. private league, so he's used to playing against comp. Every team you go against in that league's got a power five kid on it. And he's also from an area, let's be honest, it's a pretty tough area. So I'd imagine he's seen every side of the world being from D.C. That, that's a pretty fast city. So he's not going to be scared by anything he sees at the power four level. And he's also a kid that, you know, what? whatever he needs to work on, he's going to Ohio State. That'll kind of get fixed anyway, but he won't fear it. Being at Gonzaga, that's a really good school. He's been taught to do things on and off the field. He wouldn't survive there if he couldn't take it. So Ohio State or anybody that would sign him would do quite well in that regard as well. Brian, I'm going to do something a little bit different that wasn't really planned. As earlier today, before recording, it was announced that the ACC is getting sued by a second school, by Clemson, the first yeah. being Florida State. There'll be more. I, I, well, I, believe, I believe there'll be more. I think the whole conference wants to leave. But I'm thinking I'm trying to put a recruiting spin and twist on this. Ohio State is one of the schools in the Big Ten. The Big Ten, I believe, has 18 schools, and I don't think they're done. I think if they could have their way, they'll go 20, 22, 24, and compete with the SEC to kind of be, we got one half of the country, you all got the other half. Do you think there would be a scenario that if Florida State and Clemson found a way out of the ACC to get into the Big Ten, that they would make things hard, like extremely harder to where Ohio State would have to really alter the recruiting process with those two schools joined to the conference? That's an interesting question. Um, from living down south, 
I think there would be a mass revolt if Clemson went to the Big Ten. Those people want no part of the North. I'm just being honest. That's true. Florida State, a lot of that too. The panhandle is more part of Georgia and Alabama than it is Florida. So I know that they want to get the TV markets in Florida. I've been told that already. I don't know how that would work, but I think it'd be easier to get Miami than it would be to get Florida State. Clemson, I think, is going to be really hard. Yeah. Um, and Clemson's only about an hour from UGA. Like, that would be a natural – like, if the SEC doesn't want to expand, that's one thing. But turning down Clemson would probably come back to bite you. Yeah. But as far as the recruiting stuff, they have access to players down there. They're just more readily available. It's always been the same. I don't think it would change a ton, per se, but it would be interesting to see those teams have to go – like, Clemson doesn't want to play in the North in November. I can go ahead and check that box for you. Kids down here are freezing when it's 40. Like, it's just like 40 degrees to them is negative 20 to you. So living in India, I, you have no idea. It's hilarious. Saw a kid chattering his teeth the other day, and I'm not exaggerating, but at, at a tournament. I'm like, come on, bro. You're, you're 295. But it, it's hilarious. It's a kid Ohio State offered to. I'm like, you ain't going to Ohio State or Michigan. We were giving him a hard time. But it's, it's just one of those things where Clemson and Florida State would up the ante. Yeah. If you miss in a recruiting cycle, if you have a down year, yeah. when that class becomes seniors, you ain't beating the teams that are going to be in the Big Ten. You have zero shot to win the Big Ten. There are no recruiting years off Clemson or Florida State aside because you got Washington, USC, UCLA, and Oregon. Anyway, you add anybody from the South on top of it, that just adds the conundrum. I think it would be interesting, but from, again, from what I've heard, they would really like to hit the mark. And I'm sure they would take Clemson too because of the brand. They want a team in Florida, but I think Miami would be the easiest pick because that's a big market. They would love to have that TV. It's not about the team. It's about the market. Would you rather have Tallahassee or Miami? Yeah. That's that's just the way it is. So I'm curious to see how this works out. I have no idea who's all going to sue, but I've heard North Carolina. I've heard Miami. I've heard all kinds of things. This is going to be a war of computer notepads and just stup- stupidity because everybody's just yelling at each. It's pretty much like Democrats and Republicans is really what it is. It's, it's that bad. I hate using that sub of sport, but it's really similar. It's really similar. So I, my, my question is, regardless, who not, not only who goes, how long? Yeah. Like that stuff is just, there's an endless list of possibilities with litigation. They got to decide what state they're gonna they're gonna file in because there's gonna be, anytime somebody sues they they're gonna counter sue them. Yeah. So all that stuff we may, somebody said to me like oh well next year no it ain't gonna happen next year <laughs> these things aren't gonna be in the Big Ten or SEC next year but it's interesting I I still hate it though it would be interesting to say well you know the annual Big Ten game Clemson and Ohio State like that just doesn't even remotely sound no, right it doesn't. It does. It's terrible. It's no. t- I like regional football. Yes. Because it's about the culture. I live in Alabama now. Like the teams here should never play Big Ten teams because the cultures are just too far apart. They just are. So it's okay once in a while, but I can't imagine Clemson wanting to go to the Big Ten. Yeah, I, I could neither. Brian, really enjoy you being on the show. You can follow him on X, formerly known as Twitter at FB Scout underscore Florida. You can follow me on the same platform at JStevens07. Guys, this has been Locked on Buckeyes here on a Wednesday. We'll see you next time.